Hello everybody, how are you? How are you? Oh, I feel like I need a pillow to sit on today. It is uh, Saturday, March 28th. <laughs> Ooh, old lady needs a pillow. It's Saturday, March 28th. It's a rainy day, but there's a lot of light coming in through my window. And today, um, oh, I should introduce myself first. My name is Rebecca Baruki. I'm a meditation guide. I'm a mother of five. I am an author of bit books for big readers and little readers. And today, instead of doing my daily meditation, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I am reading a book to you. <laughs> a very special book um, that I wrote last year and it was published on December 31st, New Year's Eve, Zara's Big Messy Day that turned out okay. So this is going to be a little reading break. I'm going to start doing this on Saturdays and on Sundays I'm going to take the day off. I'm going to take the day off from the daily meditation just so that I can decompress because these days with kids at home, distance learning, and doing the daily meditations, and getting ready to launch the next big campa campaign for Zara have been exhausting. So this is kind of a meditation. Um, it's something for your little ones. So if you have little ones, please enjoy this live with them, bring them into the room, or you can watch this in replay and share it again and again. And if you follow the links in the video description, you can pick up the digital bundle for Zara's Big Messy Day absolutely free. And it includes all kinds of extra goodies and activity sheets, coloring sheets, the audio book, uh, an exclusive meditation for your little ones, and then um, the Spanish translation of the book. And I also have it available on video for you with my good friend Nancy Torres reading. So here we go. So this is Zara's Big Messy Day that turned out okay, written by Rebecca Verrucchi, illustrated by Danielle Pioli, my very, very talented illustrator. It's actually dedicated to my son, Sonny's second grade class, because they were the first audience to uh, let me read it to them. It was a different version of it because it became refined over a year. But um, yeah, they mean a lot to me. It was Monday morning and mama was busy. Busy making breakfast. Busy trying to get Zara's little brother Sam to eat breakfast. Busy getting ready for work. This is what every morning is like, Zara thought. <laughs> I'm laughing because pew pew pew. Sam. Zara never made trouble. She was in the second grade and had a lot of important jobs and responsibilities. See, she's getting dressed, she's putting her clothes on all by herself. She always remembered to put her pajamas away, get dressed, and brush her teeth on her own. Zara even put the cap back on the toothpaste when she was done. Wow. Sam, on the other hand, was always causing a commotion. Ooh, there he is. Zara did her best to pay him no attention, but ignoring Sam was hard. Sam crashed into Zara with his toy robot and her orange juice spilled and splattered all over her school clothes. Stop it, stop it, stop it, Zara yelled as she ran to her bedroom and slammed the door. That's Sam. Sam is actually modeled after my little sister, Leah. She was rotten. <laughs> Zara, Mama said softly, you seem upset. I think I know how you feel. I used to stuff so many of my feelings down inside that it felt like I might explode. Grandma taught me something when I was a little girl that helped me a lot. Maybe it can help you too. Next time you start to feel mad or sad or like your feelings are too big to handle, close your eyes. And with a big breath in, pretend there's a bunch of flowers under your nose. Then blow that big breath out and pretend you're blowing out candles, like on a birthday cake. Zara loved pretending. You see Zara? This is her little dragon. He's going to make an appearance in the second book, Zara's Big Messy Bedtime. Stay tuned. 
close your eyes, Zara said to herself. Smell the flowers. She took a deep breath in. Blow out the candles. She blew that big breath out. Just like that. When Zara opened her eyes, she could still hear Sam running around the kitchen. See? Pew, 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 pew. And her clothes were still a mess. But to her surprise, she felt a little better. Here's a big part. At recess, Penelope laughed at Zara's new light-up shoes. Look at that Penelope. They were a gift from Daddy, and that made them extra special. But Penelope didn't know that or care. So that's Zara's daddy giving her her special light up sneakers and look how happy she is. <laughs> hey everybody, Zara's wearing baby shoes. Goo goo gaga. Zara clenched her hands into fists and twisted her mouth into a grimace. She wanted to yell at Penelope. But then Zara remembered. She remembered the orange juice. She remembered Mama's words, and she remembered feeling better. Here she goes. She's going to do it on her own. Let's see if we can do it together. Close your eyes. Swoop. We don't want Penelope. <laughs> Smell the flowers. Blow out the candles. When Penelope opened her eyes, or when Zara, sorry, when Zara opened her eyes, Penelope wasn't there. See, Penelope's like walking off. She's mad. <laughs> and Zara felt better, not mad or sad at all. Mama's words worked again. Zara knew to tell her teacher what happened. Miss Tapper thanked her and promised to help. Zara felt relieved. Now we're home. It's dinner time. Sam likes Chinese food, so Mama didn't spend all of dinner time reminding him to stay in his seat. After they ate, Zara cleared the table and filled the dishwasher. She enjoyed helping. See, they're having some Chinese food. Sam is happy. And Zara's helping with the dishes. She really liked to do that. Instead of helping Zara, Sam made a mess with his blocks. And when Zara tried to build a tower, Sam sent it tumbling to the floor before she was done. Zara wanted to throw a block at him, but that would only make things worse. She remembered Mama's words. Here we go again. Oh. Close your eyes. Smell the flowers. Blow out the candles. It's that easy. It's that easy. So what do you think happened? What do you think happened after that? When Zara opened her eyes, Sam was still stomping around and making a mess, but she didn't want to throw blocks at him anymore. Mama, can you ask Sam to leave my tower alone? Zara asked. Mama pretended the blocks were cars and zoomed them back and forth with Sam. Zara built a tower so tall that she had to stand on tippy toes to put the last block on top. See? Beep, 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 beep. Blocks are great. You can pretend they're anything. You can build houses and towers. Whole towns. Robots. Oh, this is a big page. Mama was busy but she was never too busy to tuck Zara into bed. Zara told Mama about her day. She reminded her about the orange juice, and she told her about Penelope teasing her at school. Zara told Mama how mad she got when Sam knocked over her tower, and about all the time she smelled the flowers and blew out the candles. Wow, exclaimed Mama. It sounds like you had a big day. How do you feel? I didn't like how it felt when I got mad at Sam or when Penelope teased me, Zara replied. 
but smelling the flowers and blowing out the candles helped a lot. That's wonderful, Mama said with a smile. All of those feelings are normal, and it's also okay to want to feel better if you're feeling upset. Now you know how to help yourself feel better on your own. Would you like a hug? Zara grinned from ear to ear and threw her arms around Mama. Zara's big messy day turned out even better than okay. And if you look really close through the book, you're going to find lots of cool things like this book right here. It says Sunny's Wisdom. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know all about Sunny's Wisdom. The end. Look how happy. There's Mama and Zara lying amongst the flowers, holding a cupcake with a candle on top. So I'm going to read to big people out there. So little people, you can listen. I'm going to teach your parents a little bit about meditation. And this is in the back of the book for you. And remember, you can get the entire digital bundle for free. You go into the video description, there's a link, you get the ebook version, the audiobook version, an exclusive meditation, coloring and activity pages, a big messy emotions chart. You also get the big messy emotions chart in Spanish, and you get the ebook in Spanish, and you get a video of me reading the book, but it's it's much cooler than this. So you like see the pages and all that. And you get a video of my friend, Nancy Torres, who is also a children's meditation guide. And she's reading the book in Spanish for me. So you can listen along and like, or you could just like take a nap and let Nancy read to your kids. So this is a note for parents, caregivers, and educators. My sincere hope is that you and your children use this story and the practice it offers to create tiny moments of peace throughout your day. Now that you've read the story with your little ones, it's time to help them make Zara's practice their own. You're about to play the part of a meditation teacher, but don't worry if you don't have much or any experience. Helping a child learn to meditate is easy when you approach the task without any attachment to a perfect outcome. For a lot of people, meditation means sitting still and thinking about nothing. In 25 years of daily practice, now 26, that's never been my goal. My personal definition of meditation is simply taking the time to say to myself, and if you've read my books, you know that I say this a lot, yes, I see you. I recognize that you're a thinking, feeling person, and I'm here to listen. That's it. Meditation is taking the time to check in with your feelings and create a little oasis of peace and calm in your day. There are as many effective ways to meditate as there are people on the planet. Seven billion different ways to meditate. Yes, and counting. So there's no wrong way to practice. If you can breathe, you can meditate. The word relative will be your new best friend during this process. Instead of finding a perfectly quiet spot for their practice, know that, a rel that relative quiet will do. It might be too much to expect a child to be perfectly still, but relative stillness, read, not running around in circles, will work just fine. It's hard for a lot of adults to sit still too. This one, this one. Fidgeting a bit in their seat during meditation is normal for adults too. It's of no matter whether you have two minutes or 20 to guide their practice. Just taking a few moments to pause can create a total shift in mood and mindset. Get playful and creative. Using a real candle isn't recommended, so try playing pretend with flowers, real or imitation, and battery-operated tea light candles. You can find fun color change versions in craft stores and online. Or you can like cut out candles with paper, and when you blow on them, they flicker. Or they can use only their imagination like Zara. And I told you where to go to get the free stuff. That's right there. It's linked in the book. This simple three-step practice, close your eyes, inhale, exhale, is meant to create a gentle pause and an opportunity for your child to move their attention from what's bothering or worrying them to something safe and comforting. Over time, you might want to experiment with replacing the flowers and candles with other objects. Let the child guide the process. Soon, they'll have a meditation practice that belongs to only them and a way to access calm and quiet no matter what outside circumstances may be. And that can offer space for more in-depth conversations about their feelings and discussions about peaceful conflict resolution. I know y'all are at home with your kids right now, a lot of you. 
And that peaceful conflict resolution is very important, especially among siblings. And then I just tell you that your feedback means the world to me. I write that in the book, but I love when you comment below. And I want you to just keep in touch with me all over social media. And remember right now, because of everything that's going on, and because I always want to be in service to you, and because frankly, it's really easy to give away digital stuff for free. <laughs> it doesn't cost me anything. There's a link in the video description to not only pick up the Zara's Big Messy Day bundle for you and your family. Um, I have my other books available for free. So these are published by Hay House. These are not self-published. So you can get them on Amazon if you want, but I'm also giving away the PDF digital versions away in my private Facebook community. This is Managing the Mother Load, a guide to creating more ease, space, and grace in motherhood. That's my book from Mamas. It is not a parenting book. I have five kids. I will still not assume that I am an expert in any parenting <laughs> situation whatsoever. So this is a book for the for the mamas. And this is You Have Four Minutes to Change Your Life. This one right now is selling like hotcakes. I wonder why people are stressed out. So there's 27 self-guided meditations, simple four minute meditations for inspiration, transformation, and true bliss. Those are inside. There's lots of stories, personal stories from my life that have informed my practice and helped me develop this four minute method. and you can have this. It's no strings attached. Um, you don't have to sign up for anything to get these. Just go to my private Facebook group. And if you're already in there, just find the link. Um, if you are not in there, just join. And for this one, I do ask for your email because we have lots of big things coming out this year. Um, school initiatives. I have a nonprofit called Wheat Penny Press Big Readers or the Wheat Penny Press Little Readers Big Change Initiative, which puts free books into schools. Every single time you buy a copy of Zara's Big Messy Day, a student in need gets a free book. Um, if you go to uh, the link to get this, um, to get this free download, um, you're also going to see a video of me in Baltimore just a couple weeks ago giving away 280 books to kids. We've given away over 1,200, which is so exciting, and we want to give away thousands more. So please help with that effort if you'd like. But yeah, we have lots coming out about that. So I'm going to email you. You're not on my regular newsletter list. You're not going to get Bex Life stuff. You're just going to get stuff about that. Um, where do you get the mother book for my partner? Okay, so if you want to buy it, which is cool, keep my lights on, you can go to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, anywhere books are sold. This is is, um, this is the managing the mother load. You can find that anywhere. Um, but if you want to get the PDF digital version for free, the link is in the video description to just join my Facebook community. And when I welcome you, I give you the link. So you'll get that. Or you can just search around and see where I posted it before. Um, but that's it for the day. I'm going to be doing this every Saturday, just reading a book, um, not my own. I'm going to be reading other people's books, children's books, really meaningful passages from um, uh, books by adults that are also appropriate for the whole family because I want to nurture your entire family during this time. And then Sundays, I'm going to start taking off. But I say this now, I, you know, I could wake up tomorrow and be like, I need to get online because this extrovert is suffering, suffering in isolation, even though I am with my entire family, five kids, husbands, all the animals. But yeah, it still feels isolating to me. So please send me virtual hugs. I love you. I love you. I love you. I say that three times to affirm that the, the truth of it. And I'm so grateful for you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I usually say this first, but now I'm saying it last. I really appreciate you from the bottom of my heart showing up. Um, some of you every day, some of you just a couple times a week, but I appreciate some of you throughout the years, the, the, you know, the 11, 12 years I've been doing this. Um, I really appreciate you showing up for me because it inspires and compels me to show up for you and myself, because that's really important too. When we nourish ourselves with this, this time by ourselves to just say, Hey, I see you. I love you. You're worth listening to all that good stuff. It really sends a signal out to the world that you're worthy, but it sends a signal out to the world that, that they are worthy too, that others are worthy too. So hello, Rebecca. Hey, I came here. <laughs> Um, yeah, I love you guys. I will see you soon. Oh, I love you folks. I keep, get me out of that habit of saying guys. I know you're not all guys and I just don't like that because some people don't like being called guys. That's not right. Um, but yeah, links in the video description. I'll see you.